and welcome to another video of Solidity Do-It-Yourself tutorial. In the previous video, we created a function to deposit cryptos onto a contract. We called it as deposit crypto function. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to withdraw cryptos from a contract. Now, this is what I'm going to do. You will see how to withdraw cryptos from a contract to an account. And while doing so, you would also see there are a lot of issues, there are a lot of loopholes that can exist. With time and with the next series of videos, I'm gonna show you how to plug in those loopholes. So deposit is simple. Deposit meaning the crypto value is coming to the contract, but while you withdraw, it is a different game altogether because it requires a lot of check balances, making sure that you're not withdrawing over, a lot of things, right? So let's focus on how to create a withdraw function. First of all, I'm gonna do function withdraw crypto, and you're gonna input how much to withdraw, and it's gonna be a public thing. Please note that for to start with, I'm not gonna make this function as payable. Next is, I'm going to use the call method. There are multiple methods that you can use. Uh, call is one of the best methods. And in probably the next video or probably in the same video, that depends, we will, we will see all the methods to withdraw crypto. So this is the call method. Let's understand this statement. So for now, message start sender. That means whoever is requesting a withdraw to that address dot call. That is the method value. Value, how much you wanna withdraw the crypto. And this is another function for example, if you wanna do some price conversion, you wanna call something, we are gonna see this in, in the future. But for now, I'm leaving it as blank. So very simple. It needs a payable method. Remember, we did not put payable here. So we need payable message.sender. That means whoever is requesting the function to be executed on the smart contract, dot call and value crypto amount. And this is a function that you can call later uh, for other reasons. We will, will, for now, exclude that. We'll just keep that as a placeholder, which is a required thing. Now this call returns two things. One, it returns the Boolean success or failure, and then it also returns the gas that is used. For now, we are not gonna be uh, using any data thing. So I'm just using this Boolean success. That's why you see there is a blank after comma. So this will tell me that if, the, if it is success, it will be true. If it is not success, it will be false. And then I would say require call success. That means I require this to be true. If not, the call failed, right? So my call failed. And then I'm going to close the function. So very simple. This is, again, I understand. And as we discussed, there are a lot of loopholes and we will try to fill in as and when we go. For now, I'm just gonna delete the old contract, go in, compile, come back, deploy. You see it's deployed. We got the contract here. And please note that the withdraw function is orange while de deposit is red. It is red because it's payable. And this is orange because it's just a regular function. All right, now let's do that. So I am going to, so I need to deposit something to withdraw, right, on this contract. So I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna say deposit, let's say thousand GUI deposit. So you see thousand GUIs are deposited and then I'm going to withdraw. So I'm gonna withdraw. So one GUI is, so this is in way. So I have to, I'm just, putting 100,000 or 1 million, 1 million way, I'll say withdraw. You see this, the balance has changed 
and this has been withdrawn to this contract. But interesting, right? This account withdraw withdrew this amount from the contract which we deployed. What if this account is not the owner of the contract? I'll, I'll show you another case, right? Let's assume that I have deployed or have deposited. Let me transfer from this fresh account one ether. So I'm gonna deposit. You see that the value here is one ether. Now I'm gonna withdraw this to, let's say this account. Please note that this account has 98.999 ethers. I'm going to withdraw because it's in way, I have put 18 zeros, 3, 3, 6, 3, 9, 3, 12, 3, 15, 3, 18. This is one ether because we have 18 digits. This is in way. As soon as I say withdraw, you make sure that this account will go to 99.9. I say withdraw. This is finished. You see, it goes to 99.9. That means anybody and everybody who is able to execute the function has been able to withdraw. So please note that it says from. This means that this account has requested. Please understand. When it says from does not mean that the value has been transferred from to this. It means that the withdraw function has been called from. So this is message.sender. So this particular address, which is this account, is gonna receive the value from this account. That means this account is the originator. The message.sender is this particular wallet address. And therefore, you see that the balance has reduced by one ether and it, you have credited this account or this address as one ether. I hope this is clear. In the next video, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna focus on specifically different types of withdrawal functions. Again, thank you for watching.